So this is the project overview. We started right uh, uh, on the mark at 9.50. Uh, so um, what uh, is happening for the project? So project is divided into five milestones. Milestone one, two, three, four are the, uh, uh, the engine and all the guts of the system where you design and build all the uh, parts and requirements that system needs that to be able to actually run. And in milestone five, you put them together and assemble them into an application. Milestone one, that is your first thing, and I think it's due in um, three days, is essentially a mock-up of the application. When you're going to create the application as if it's a real application, but it's not. It's not going to work, okay? It's just a fake thing that runs uh, as if uh, it is the app, but uh, uh, let me just see if that's the one. Yes. So when it runs, it runs like this. Your work is to, your job is to create a point of sale system. Obviously, I'll try to simplify it as much as I could. It's like a very simple store that you have where your inventory, you don't have an inventory. Your inventory is actually the shelves of the store. So you can list all the items that you have in a store. You can um, add to the items that you want to put on the shelf. So a new item that comes in. When an item is not going to be sold anymore, you can remove it from the system. And you can stock items. So the items you already have, you add to their quantities. Okay? Um, and obviously, it's a point of sale. The point, point of sale by itself is the heart of the application where things are sold. Essentially, you scan the... Uh, uh, the SKUs and uh, the, uh, it shows the price and adds one item to the bill and you finalize the sale. It prints the bill. This is the amount of money that you're going to. Uh, this is the amount of thing that's going to be um, sold and it's re uh, it uh, reduces the quantities of the uh, products one by one. That's going to be the outcome of the final thing that you have. Your mock-up works exactly like this as you see. It shows a menu, shows what's going on, but like what is happening. So it says load items. Obviously nothing's in being, nothing is being loaded. It's just the function that prints that. Then it's, and inside the function it says loading data from data, that file, there is no, you're not opening any file, you're just printing a message. That's what we call a mock-up. So when you select for it, and it has to, work properly. It means like if I, I put minus one, it's going to tell me that's wrong. If I put ABC, it's going to tell me that's invalid integer. If I put six, again, it's going to say wrong. And if I put one, then it actually says listing items. Then it says running list items. So um, that's the title that you're printing at the beginning of everything. So hopefully you're going to convert that to a function of yours. And this is what the function actually does, running list items. You just print that, OK? It's just a mock-up of the system. So when I click uh, hit two, it's going to tell me adding item to the store. When I hit three, it's going to say removing items. If I hit four, it's going to say stock item. If I put five, now it's going to say running POS. And when you say zero, uh, it's going to say saving data in yada, 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 and goodbye. So that's your uh, milestone one. Um, and it, in specifics, uh, in the project, it, it tells you exactly what is the minimum things that are needed. But remember, the project is completely open-ended, which means any functions you need to add, please add it. As long as you satisfy the functions I need to test whatever I want to test, you can add anything you want. You can uh, use anything you want. And I really encourage you to use your utils. Uh, C. So bring your utils.c, all the things that we, utils.cpp, all the functionalities that we have on those things will reduce the time of implementation by around 40%. So we, you have most of the functions in your utils.c. There is one difference, uh, and I'm going to pause it over here because this is going to be, okay, so um, Follow the citation rules and everything that are in here. And if your professor has something other than here, they're going to give you an addendum uh, email to you or something that you have to follow. But these are the general rules that you have. 
Uh, all the information that you see over here is exactly well, the, the compilation, that, uh, the execution that I showed you. It's ac absolutely no difference. Everything works the exact same way. And if I showed you the final product of, uh, of the, um, of the, um, of the system, you will see that it's, you will really not notice the difference. It works almost the identical. So if I actually loaded the, uh, the final project, let me pause the recording. As you see, this is going to be the final product. So essentially, now everything is loaded into the system. Now, um, what you do over here, you put one, and it shows all the, all the uh, stuff that you have in the, in the inventory, and it shows exactly how much is the asset of the, of the uh, whole uh, place. If you want to add an item, you simply go to hit one over here, and um, sorry, that's list to add an item. You add an item, so it, it tells you adding item to store, press enter to start, and you do that, is this, is this item perishable or not? You, you go with it, and one by one, it's going to actually go through it and uh, get the item. So you're going to uh, see the explanation for all those things when it comes up. And um, I'm going to control C it and get out, run it one more time, and show you the POS. So essentially, f POS happens like this. So when you're actually over here, 5, and I'll go POS. So I entered the SKU. I don't know if I have this SKU over there or not. No item not found. I have to look at the SKUs that are in the system. So when you look at the SKUs that are in the system, so 6539, so 6539, then it's going to show, there you go. So. Uh, the original chips is added to the bill. As you see, this is added to the bill. Then uh, you go for the next one, and you keep doing that. So it keeps adding the items to the bill. It's at, say, I, I, I'm selling two of those, three, nine, uh, and do it like that. Then you hit enter just by itself, and the bill is issued, and that's uh, uh, the price of, of each of them, and they're taxed, and that's the, the outcome. So now if I look at the inventory, you will see that the, the, the the uh, quantity of those values are reduced from the inventory. So it's a very simple, easy point of sale. So you don't have quantity. We are not doing anything fancy. You just scan them one by one, and you do it. And then when you exit, it updates the data and writes it back over the inventory. So you bring it back up again one more time. You will see that those values are lowered and so on and so forth. That's it. So that's the whole system. and. Uh, uh, The submission process uh, works as follows, which means the first, which is the first four milestones. Each one has 10%, and they have very, uh, they they are, uh, um, they have a very loose uh, deadline, which means whatever the deadline is. For example, now, uh, it, and these are the the amount of approximate time you need to complete them, based on the amount of coding you're supposed to do. So. So just, it, this is five days, nine days, 10 days, four days, and 14. So you know exactly how much each one needs to, to, to concentrate on. Uh, but if you can go seven days more, and you still will get your 10%. So if the due date is, I think it was, what was the due date, 10th? So the first due date is 10th. It will get, you, you will get a full mark if you, even if you are one week late, but don't. Try to be early. It's very simple to finish it seriously. This, I don't know, this weekend or right after you did your, your midterm, you sit on that thing and, and you're going to be finished in, in two hours max. It's not a difficult thing to do. It's very, very simple thing to do. Okay? Um, it's literally IPC 144's uh, first part of the project that they have is exactly like yours. So it's no difference. So it's the same thing. So do it and be done with it uh, so you have time. But be careful. If you are more than one week late, you get 0%, but you have to submit it. So submission of the first four milestones are mandatory. The reason is that things that are tested in the milestones will not going to test in the last one. If I did that, then you, you have to do three hours of submission to go through every single thing that has to be checked. Because we don't want to do that, 
we do the test, spread it into the four milestones. So you have to submit the milestone even if it's late. It's, let's say extra late. If you don't submit the milestone, your project's going to be incomplete. Milestone five, to make it again simple, it's divided into five pieces, which are the five options that you have in your system. For your project to be submittable, to gain any marks, you must submit the first four milestones and at least one of these. Therefore, the minimum mark that you can get if you do everything perfectly is 52%, which is four milestones and 12% for, for M51. So if you can just list the items and you don't do anything else, and it works only down to that point, you get 52%. Then you do the second one that is adding an item, or you do something that adds to a stock or something like that. If you add one feature, another 12% will be added to it. And if you do the whole thing, you have 100%. Okay? Uh, and everything is due on April 16th. Uh, and then uh, you lose 10% for every day that you have for five days and then zero after that, okay? So, um, and that's it. Uh, any questions about the, the project? Suggestions? Objections? We're good? Okay. So that's the project. Are you sure? Oh yeah, go ahead. So, um, uh, so, you're, so you're saying when it returns the same thing, receives the same thing and returns the same thing, what's going to look like? Is that what you're asking? If I, if I can understand, I didn't understand the question. <laughs> Sorry, one more time. If the potential to like return reference about string, mm -hmm. and then also if it's inputted to reference of I string, yes. if it does input and output. No, it doesn't do it. No function does both. So you have one function that is responsible for reading. If I did something like that, it's a typo, okay? One function, the function that receives and returns iStream, the job of that function is to read, that's it. The function that receives OStream and returns OStream, the job of that function is only to write or print, that's it, okay? How it's going to print later on is gonna be set through a flag in the object. So. So essentially, you're going to have a flag in the object that says the input output is supposed to be file. Then all the, everything switches to file mode. Input output should be in form. Then everything's going to switch in a form mode. Uh, or the input output is in list mode. Then everything's going to switch to list mode. It's, uh, it's, uh, I, when I say it like this, it sounds difficult. But because I broke it down into like 10 milestones, each one focuses on one thing. It's easy when you get to it. You'll see. Okay, so it's not a, a tough thing to do. You'll, you'll find that. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes, yeah, you have, you're essentially doing nothing. The only programming in here involved is the menu. Yes. No, no, it's, all, it's always the exact same thing. So the signatures of, so first of all, uh, the question was actually really good. All the milestones that you see that you do, you can always go back and change it, and that will happen. It's possible that I come to milestone four, and when I'm writing the thing, I say, oops, that's not going to work out if milestone three's object class is designed that way. So this method has to be added to it. It's very possible that I'm going to ask you to go change something that you're doing in milestone number two. In milestone number two, you're going to design two classes. One is an error class, and the other one is a date class. An error class is going to responsible be responsible for all the valid, uh, validation messages and everything. Instead of using a Boolean flag, you are using an error object. And the error object returns true or false if, the, uh, uh, if your object is in an erroneous uh, state. So, that's what happens. So, so if I see something is needed, I'll ask you to go back and do it. But yes, 
every function that you write over here, its signature, how it works and stuff may change in future milestones. That's how it's, all the systems are developed. First, you build a mock-up and then you add to the mock-up. So you saw the final thing and you saw the milestone one. So the uh, menu is exactly the same. Well, how things work inside the, the system, that's different, okay? Thank you for the question. Any other question? No? Yeah, yeah, question? No? All right. So now stop. <laughs>